actor and comedian Louis C.K. now admits to the sexual misconduct allegations against him and says they are true. This comes after a New York Times article on Thursday in which five women said that they had inappropriate interactions with C.K. Since the story broke his film, I Love You Daddy, has been shelved and Netflix has dropped its plans for an upcoming special with the comedian. Louis C.K.'s statement reads in part, he says that the allegations are true. And he also says that the power he had over the women was that they admired him and he wielded that power irresponsibly. CK goes on to say that he's been remorseful of his actions and that the hardest regret to live with is what you've done to hurt someone. Joining us now, CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. She's on the phone right now. Ricky, what do you make of this? Well, this is what we call the two courts. <laughs> one is the court of public relations and the public opinion. The other one is, of course, the court of law. Uh, the reason, clearly, besides, I suppose, some kind of remorse, is that Louis C.K., his attorneys, his managers, his PR people, or anyone else who may have been involved with him since the story broke, decided to make a statement with the hope that they could really mitigate the ultimate damages, which is personal and professional fallout. When you get to the law side of it, Rena, the exposing oneself, which is really what we're talking about here, um, is a misdemeanor. Uh, the major act happened at, uh, in Aspen, which is in Colorado. The statute of limitations for that act uh, is 18 months because it is a misdemeanor. So that has passed. Um, so the women who have accused him... I assume, uh, for the sake of argument, accused him at this point in time because they felt badly about this incident and that they had not come forth in order to protect other women. So they come forth now. Um, I do not think they are looking to go forward with any kind of criminal case, and it is too late. And I doubt that they are going forward with any kind of civil case, so surprises happen. But this is the kind of behavior on the part of Louis C.K. that really should not have to happen and should not need to be tolerated by women who find themselves in a situation, even though this is a social situation, after a performance, where someone says, you know, in essence, without going into his direct quotes, you know, can I pull it out and show it to you, um, let alone touch it and pleasure myself. So when you have someone, when you have a male who is an admired figure, a star, a celebrity, masturbating in front of other women or touching himself in front of other women who kind of feel paralyzed that they can't get out of the room, this is not good behavior. We want to stop this behavior. And that is why they accused him. And I think in the end, in terms of his public, opinion, public fallout, it probably was a good thing for him to say, look, they consented, they said, okay, I could do this, but now I realize that it was harmful for, to them and I shouldn't have done it because I was in a position of power. Um, we'll see how this plays out, Rena. Ricky, you know, you touched on the fact that it has been a long time since these, the, the, this situation happened and the fact that criminal charges couldn't necessarily be pushed against him. The fact that he's apologized publicly, the New York Times reported, he also apologized on Facebook as well. What do you make of that? Could there be any other type of charges pressed against him? I don't see any kind of criminal charges. It is possible uh, that the women, if perhaps, um, and I have no idea, if they have gone into therapy, if they've had some kind of emotional distress about this, uh, that perhaps they could go forward and file a lawsuit. Um, in the end, probably the best thing about all of this is simply that, with no pun intended, that the truth gets exposed and that other people know, hey, this is not funny. This really is not funny. Uh, if you find yourself as a female in a room with a comedian, with a rock star, with a movie star, with your boss, with a celebrity, with someone who has power over you, and he does something like this, this is very inappropriate. Um, and it does make women feel uneasy, and they don't know what to do. 
do they laugh to try to be part of the crowd? Do they then go outside and cry? Um, this is a terrible thing to really do to women. And I think that, first of all, the preoccupation with um, exposing oneself and touching oneself as a male is, is just odd. It's plainly odd behavior. Uh, and we start to hear more and more of this in these recent tales. And it makes you wonder how many other people like this there are out there. Maybe it isn't so odd. Maybe it's more common than I think, but in, I doubt it. So for all of these people so involved in self-love um, and self-worship, well, they really need to stop doing this stuff. Uh, it's not funny. It's abusive. It's harassing. And women, uh, I don't care. These could be strong women. These could be women who are not easily intimidated. And yet, at the same time, you're in a situation where you really don't know how to get out of the room. Ricky, so, what, um, it's good that he apologized. Ricky, the fact that whether it's Hollywood or the comedy world or the media world, that we're hearing these sort of stories more and more, whether it's masturbation or rape or sexual assault or whatever, how does a corporate culture combat this when you're hearing of these allegations Will it ever stop? Well, I, I would hope it would stop, but I've hoped this before. You know, I left the world of the law to go to television um, two decades ago. And at that point in time, that's 20 years ago, uh, we had had cases where there were sexually harassing, rampant cultures, and there were big, big cases and big, big verdicts, and we thought 20 years ago, this is going to stop. Companies uh, instituted strict training on sexual harassment. Everybody took the training, um, and you continued to take the training. You didn't just do it once. And we thought that this was what we were supposed to do as companies. Um, we have to do a lot more. There has got to be a no-tolerance policy of any kind of uh, sexual harassment, let alone uh, sexual assault or rape, which would be obviously pushing us right to the criminal side. So I have two thoughts about this. There are only, uh, there's only two ways to really stop this. One is, on the sexual assault or rape situation, please go to the police and go as soon as possible. And that is really, really important. And number two, within the corporate culture, there must be an HR department that will take these cases and go forth to make a difference to everyone in the company. And third, the issue of non-disclosure agreements within a corporate culture becomes very problematic indeed. Because it's one thing to have a non-disclosure the first time. But if there is ever another complaint, then you really wind up with a company that has something to lose. So it is just time to be transparent and to have policies in place that women, and sometimes it's men too, but that victims feel that they can go and they will be heard and they will be protected. Let's just hope some of these things get implemented, Ricky. Some great ideas here. Ricky Kleeman, thank you for breaking it down from a legal perspective for us and joining us, Ricky. Thanks, Rina. Always a pleasure.